This section is for people who work in a timber yard, sawmill or manufacturing plant and cross-cut timber products on a stable base, such as trestles or bearers on the ground. If you're involved in cross-cutting logs or felled trees, you should skip this section and go to the next section, Trim and Cut Felled Trees. Most chainsaws are powered by a two-stroke petrol engine, but some smaller saws use electric motors that plug into a normal 240 volt power point. Generally speaking, the cutting techniques you use will be the same for both types of saw, although you need to be careful with the power lead on an electric saw and make sure no one trips or you don't cut through it. Before you begin to cross cut any timber product, you need to make sure it's on a stable base and that it won't move while you're cutting it. You may also need to put supports under the offcut to stop it from tearing the grain on the underside as it falls. If you're working near the ground, you'll also need a protective board underneath the cut so that the cutters don't touch the ground. When you're working on trestles, you won't need a board underneath, but you should use at least one G-clamp to hold the timber in place so that the chain doesn't pull it in towards the saw while you're cutting. If you're cutting large bundles or packs of timber in half, make sure the bearers underneath form a straight line across the top. If they're not in a straight line, like in this example where this piece is undersized, you'll run the risk of the cut closing up while you're still cutting and jamming the saw. If you find yourself working on uneven ground, you should take the time to line up the bearers across their tops. This may require extra packing pieces placed on top or under the existing bearers. If you're doing a lot of cross-cutting with a chainsaw, it's worth going to the trouble of making sure that you've always got a trolley on hand. You could even make your own with the bearers spaced at intervals that suit you the best. It's also a good idea to make up a yardstick marked out in increments of 300 millimetres so you can mark off the lengths you need to cut easily without having to worry about a tape measure.